you found why we are Christians. My name is Kent Philpot. Sitting here uh, is my wife, Katie. And on a screen in front of us, we're Skyping Sarah Bolme, and she is in North Carolina. Hello, Sarah. Hi, Kent. Hi, Katie. <laughs> Hello. We've been wanting to do this for a couple of years now. Finally, we got to, we got to get you. And uh, we have got time. We, uh, I'm just going to explain real quick how we know Sarah. She is, has the Christian Indie Publishing Association. We're one of about 100 plus people that are part of her association, and she allows people like us, small time people, to go to the big conventions. All right, Katie. <laughs> All right. So I think you can finally uh, see uh, both of us on your screen. And hi, Sarah. <laughs> hi, Katie. <laughs> so glad to see you again, and so glad that uh, you are uh, who you are and that we have known you for so many years and that you are um, uh, once again going to have a place for us to be at the National Religious Broadcasters. I know that you were born in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Can you tell us a little bit about your family of origin, what that was all about and like and who they were? So I was born in Minnesota, the frozen land, where it gets cold, cold, cold in the winter. Yeah. <laughs> my father was, and well, he's retired now, was a Baptist preacher. And I was the youngest of four children. There were three girls and one boy, and I was the youngest. And so um, I grew up as a preacher's kid. <laughs> Otherwise known as PK. PK. <laughs> right, a PK. Now, uh, and you're... Uh, paternal grandfather was a Methodist pastor. That is correct. Okay. And then my then my paternal uncle, my dad's brother, was a pres is a, was a Presbyterian pastor. He's retired wow. now too. So now and what was that like? A Presbyterian pastor. Okay. Pardon? So you had, were 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 there any kind of in pointing uh, finger pointings and and tis, Oh yes, tis with the extended you don't family quite have it right. <laughs> <laughs> and then after a while, they just stopped having those kind of theological discussions uh -huh. because it just got too heated. Yeah, but infant my, baptism, no infant baptism, all that stuff. Right, right. Yeah. <laughs> and, and your mother was also came from a Christian family. That is correct. She was a German family in North Dakota. And okay. they were, um, her parents were first generation immigrants. And so they spoke German growing up. I'm an, I see that your parents met at Northwestern Bible and Missionary Training School. In so, Minnesota, yes. Okay, so they they were thoroughly into it. It's now the University of Northwestern in Minnesota, <laughs> uh, and that your dad attended Bethel Seminary. What I I don't recognize Bethel Seminary. What's that about? It's ba it's the Baptist General Conference. Oh, oh, ba oh gen so, okay. Yeah. Baptist General Conference mm -hmm. was the conference that he was in. Okay, I understand. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, They're fairly conservative, uh, right? John Piper, John Piper John was Piper. a uh, professor at Bethel Seminary before he became a pastor. Okay. He actually attended my father's church when I was growing up. Okay. Oh, cool. Well, he was a professor at Bethel Seminary. Uh -huh. Okay. Now, you moved to, when you were 12, you moved to Washington. A little tiny town okay. in eastern Washington. Okay. I noticed here about uh, when you were in middle school, a teacher uh, would point out that you were a PK. Now, how did that work? How did that make you feel? How did the other kids treat you? What, what was going on with all that when you were that, what was that, 12, 13 years old? Right, seventh grade, eighth grade. So I went from living in Minneapolis and attending public school there where nobody knew what my father did unless I told them. So, oh. you know, pretty, pretty, a lot of anonymity. I could be whoever I wanted to be. And then I moved in seventh grade to this very, very small town of 5,000 people where everybody knows everybody's business. 
And I started running into this where at school, if I was doing something I shouldn't, not that it was anything big, maybe talking in class too much or something, my teachers would say things like, is that the way a preacher's kid should behave? And I was just like shocked. Like they didn't say, is that the way a doctor's kid should behave? Like right. this, this different expectation yeah. for a preacher's kid that somehow is supposed to be perfect and better than all the other kids really irritated me. Right. Now, yeah. if they think that about the preacher's kid, what do you think they think about the preacher? Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> that, that, would be, that would be a little tough. Yeah. Um, did it did it make you want to hide the idea that you were your dad was a pastor that you were part of a Christian family? Kind of too late, huh? No, the the fact that I my dad was a pastor I wanted to hide, but not the fact that I was part of a Christian family because I believed in Jesus from a very young age and had a very strong faith. And so instead, I wanted to set out to show people that Christians could be cool. You didn't have to be this goody goody two shoe to be a Christian. You didn't have to be straight and narrow. <laughs> So that was kind of my mission was to try to show people, oh, it's okay to be normal and be a Christian. Yeah, and then you have to decide what's normal anyway, and how <laughs> far do you go with being norm normal? Right. <laughs> that could be kind of scary. Uh, oh, oh I, I have down here, you use the term about yourself, a dumb blonde. <laughs> oh yeah, I was blonde when I was a kid, so I yeah. just fell into that in middle school, fell into that dumb blonde role because I didn't want people to know I was a straight A student, yeah. you know, who really was this kind of straight and narrow girl. Yeah. I didn't want to, ooh, the preacher's kid, so I pretended I was a dumb blonde half the time. Oh, did that help or hurt? Do you think in the end? It really helped. I, I it really did. I mean, I, 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 I was one of those kids that could flow through any kind of group. You know, I wasn't stuck in a clique. I talked to kids in every clique, you know, every group. So oh, cool. okay. it helped. Yeah. So you uh, you went to middle school in Washington. And then uh, how about high school? Where were your high school years? And then my, then my family moved. Um, after my first year of high school, my family moved to Seattle. My dad became a church planter mm -hmm. in the conference. And so he moved to Seattle where they're, they're, that area was headquartered. And so then I went um, to school, high school in the Seattle area. Yeah, what, what part of Seattle? Area? It was Bothell, um, which is just north of Seattle, mm -hmm. between Everett and Seattle. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I lived in Seattle for one year when I was 20 into 21, going to University of Washington, where you got your degree, and we'll hear about right. that soon. So yeah. now, so you went to the University of Washington, and you got a master's in social work. That's correct. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, social. How did how, how did you pick that, Sarah? How how what was attractive to that? Well, I think there were there was a number of things that played into it. I think one, just growing up as a preacher's kid, and and having a dad, you know, who was a kind of a public figure, and just being interested in people. And then I had a cousin who um, was adopted from the foster care system. And uh, my aunt and uncle had a, hor a terrible time with him. And it was right about the time when the whole attachment theory was coming out. And we realized that he actually, I realized as a teenager, oh, this kid has a reactive attachment disorder. And so then it, that just kind of just got me going. And I think I want to be in social work. I think I want to work with these kind of kids and in foster care and that sort of thing. And so that's yeah. cool. So you've continued in, in that area. That you, you kind of wear at least two hats. That's right. You do. Uh -huh. you, well, you, Three when you consider mother. Well, yes. <laughs> you got you got your two kids. We we met Wife. them at the the shows over the years, and yes. uh, great kids, great kids. What's your son's name again? Talon. Talon. Talon and your daughter. Rachel. Rachel. Okay. Yeah, great mm -hmm. kids. Well, look forward to them. Now, your husband uh, Edward. How how did you meet Edward? What how was that all all work out? We met at a Bible study. Uh, <laughs> you met at a Bible study? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't remember. It, it's, oh, it's a five-year Bible study, and I can't remember the name of it right now. People know the name of it if I said it. But they're usually men's groups and women's groups. But they were doing a experimental 
young adults group um, in two cities in Seattle was one of them. And so interestingly, both both my husband and I lived on the north end of Seattle, but we traveled every week to the south end, a 30 plus minute drive to be at this Bible study. And that is where we met. Okay. Wow. Now, were you in, that was while you were in college? No, I was I, in my late, I was 30 years yeah, old. Yeah, that's husband. right. Okay, you, you oh, that's later. right. You married when you were 30. Right. Okay. Well, what did you, so you got a master's in social work. Did you go to work as a, in that field right away, Sarah? Yes. Yes, okay. I did. <laughs> and you continue that to this day. Right. I have a private, I'm in private, private practice. practice. You're yeah. in private practice. Okay. You specialize. Okay. Uh, no, I really see mostly adults and teenagers and families and some couples. Most, you know, with your typical problems, most mm -hmm. mostly depression and anxiety. That's ah, what so many people have today sure. is that depression and anxiety. We can't figure out why anyone should be depressed or anxious in our days, today's, <laughs> you know, world. Have you seen, <laughs> just as an aside, sir, have you seen an increase in people suffering from stress and anxiety? Uh, we, we read about it and we think that that may be so with the divided United States. <laughs> but do you think I, that, that's, that, that, that our circumstances contribute to... Oh, definitely. And I will tell you, after the last election round, there was a huge spike in people coming with anxiety and, and stress. Um, especially people whose who's maybe political party wasn't voted in, really having a lot of issues and having and being stressed out over where our country was going, how it would impact them, what the future was going to be. Yes, ah. I was actually impacted myself. I've always struggled with anxiety. You may have not known that, but uh, I don't take medications or anything, but I'm aware of it. And I noticed for myself it's gone up, but yeah, yeah. So, because it brings what what I've noticed is that it brings out the kind of more extreme paranoia, or 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 even more slight paranoid thinking in people, and even our friends are having trouble talking to one another who are on different ends of the political spectrum. Right. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah. Yeah, and, and we're we have friends at fairly opposite extremes of, right. the, of that. And, it, and it's pronounced. So you, yeah. after uh, you started in private practice, you met Edward, now we call him Edward. Is he usually go by Ed or Edward? Both. Both, uh -huh. okay. I'm used to calling him Edward. But uh, uh, you met you guys at, uh, when you were in your 30s. Which is which is actually a good a good age. A so good they got, age. you got married at thirty, right? Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That, okay. Good. That, so that, that I think that that helps to be more mature. But uh, and so Rachel is the oldest child. Right. Or Rachel's is, nineteen she, and Talon is seventeen. Is she in college? Rachel's at Liberty University. Oh, she's Liberty. Actually a senior, she's actually a senior this year because she graduated early and went with some college under oh, her belt. So wow. she's going to be graduating college at 19. Oh, my goodness. So wow. she's in the, she takes after her smart parents. <laughs> 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 yeah. Well, well, you said you were smart straight A, and I know Edwards is very ex, uh, intelligent yeah. also. Yeah. He's, he's the senior techie, right? And yeah. then Talon's the junior techie. Well, I don't know. Talon is starting to oh, become Talon's senior Oh, Talon's the techie. senior techie. I know Ed does a lot of, of design and, and editing, editing stuff, doesn't he? Right. Okay. Yes, he does. Yeah. Now, Sarah, one thing I want to get into this, you know, the name of the program is Why We Are Christians. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. uh, uh, when Katie and I met you, we, we realized this is a very solid, mature Christian person here. Give us a little bit about, I know you grew up, preacher's kid and so on. I don't think that as I read your material that there was a time of a, an actual boom. Yesterday I was not a Christian, today I am. Would you say that? No, there wasn't. I think I've always believed. I remember a time when I was around six, kneeling beside my bed and asking Jesus to come into my heart. And that's the language of children. Jesus will come into my heart. It's really Jesus coming into your life, having a relationship with him. But my mom tells me, I went 
we lived in the parsonage, which was right next door to the church, and they had a church preschool. And I went to that church preschool, and my mom told me that every time the director asked the kids if they <laughs> wanted to accept Jesus into their hearts, I would raise my hand every <laughs> single time. And so, you know, I I had a strong faith from a from a young a young childhood, and I, and I I knew Jesus, and I wanted to follow Jesus. And, you know, you get into the older age where you're like in in college, where you're starting to, a lot of people question their faith, and they question what they grew up with, and do I accept what my parents believed, or which values do I keep, which values do I throw away? For me, I struggled more with um, how can my dad be a pastor? Because um, (laughs) one of the things is my dad you know, he's, he's a good man. He's a, he's a Christian man, but growing up, he had a temper at home and he was often very, very harsh with his family, with his wife and with his children. And then I would see him in church and he had this lovely persona in church that everybody loved him. And people would come up to me and say, Oh, you are so blessed to have, have him as your father. And I would just want to say, something, but I would have to bite my tongue because I knew I couldn't say anything. (laughs) And so what I struggled with was how could he be a pastor? How could somebody, you know, who had this temper problem, which is can be a sin problem, you know, be still be, you know, be a pastor. And then I realized at some point, God just showed me that we all are not perfect and he uses us anyways, even in our imperfections. And so that was more my struggle um, uh-huh. in that phase when people are usually questioning their faith. I know. I, I, when I read this, Sarah, your account that you just, just uh, spoke to us about, I thought about myself. I'm not a perfect person, and I was always aware that people thought that this guy is pure as a wind-driven snow. And I know I wasn't. <laughs> and people would discover this. <laughs> and it, it's a lot of, it's pressure. Yeah. Well, uh, it's yes, pressure. I, I, it is. Uh, and you're and forced was, sometimes yeah. to hide. But, right. you know, and we have one face here and another face someplace else. Right. And there was a lot of pressure on us from our father to be perfect. And, you know, largely because he was concerned, I think, about what the parishioners would think if his children weren't perfect. You know, and so that was that was really, di- really difficult growing up was with that that pressure. Sure. Um, yes, um, yes, it, it's a pressure all around. And so then the family members then can get at one another because of it. So, but one thing you know it taught me is I don't put anyone on a pedestal. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> you know, I don't, I, no one goes on a pedestal. I learned that at a young age. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Are now, you seeing both of us or just one? Just one. Okay. Uh, one of the things I note here is something about a summer Christian camp. And you say that was an important faith sharpening tool for you. Uh, I have never heard of such a thing as summer Christian camp. Or, or you just mean summer Christian camps or... Yeah, it is summer Christian camps. You know, most church denominations have some kind of week-long camps that they send their kids to, that they go to. And then, you know, you're in a cabin with a whole bunch of other kids and you've got a teenage cabin leader, you know, retreat leader or whatever. But, you know, they always have bringing um, guest pastors to speak. And so uh, growing up, I would go to camp for my age, and then my dad was often a camp pastor at a family camp, so we would also go to family camp. So we would often go to two camps um, during during the summertime. Yeah. But the the youth camps were the ones that were really pivotal for me. Um, so you didn't necessarily like to be known as a preacher's kid, but it that did not mean that you were hiding the fact that you were a follower of Jesus. No, no, I never had had the fact. Even in high school, my friends and I got together and started a Bible study before school. Um, We had to find a teacher who would let us host it in in her room. And I think, personally, I probably invited almost every kid in that school to that Bible study (laughs) in the years that we did it. It's a little different both uh, now in terms of time era and where we live here in Marin County, it, um, you might likely not get permission here. Right. Yeah. 
Well, and you know, the, even back then in the, in the 80s, the, the principal um, didn't give us explicit permission. What the principal said was, well, if you find a teacher who's willing to allow you to use their room before school, okay. then you can do I see. Right. Good. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, did you know anything about the Jesus People Movement at I that age? Huh? Yeah. You did? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. I, 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 I saw here that you say, I, in high school, my Pentecostal friends and I started a Bible study on, on the school premises, and I, it went through my mind. Jesus People Movement. What were those years? What were those yeah. years when, right. you, when you were doing that? You mean what years, like 1980? Okay, okay, the 1980s? It was early 80s. So I graduated in 85, so it would be like 1983 okay. and, and 4, probably, and okay. 5. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that was, uh, I've run into that many times. It's kind of the spillover from the Jesus People movement. Uh, a lot of people were converted and they got their kids and so on. Um, when you were in high school, did you get involved in any sports, Sarah? No, I did not. I was not involved in sports. You were not. I was, well, I was involved in future business leaders of America. Uh, yeah. I even okay. went to their national championship for future business leaders oh, of really? America. <laughs> well, so there you are. You're a business person. There, there it is. You certainly encourage other people to who are in business. Yeah. And uh, of course, in our second program, we'll talk a lot about the the businesses that you encourage. Yeah. And we want people yeah. to know that we'll be talking about the. Christian Independent Publishers Association right. is short for is it indie now? It's indie. 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 It indie. used to be small, but it's I like yeah. I like the change, Sarah. Indie. Thank now, um, <clears throat> you say here you're a very outspoken, blunt person, and that's true. <laughs> yes. Is that, is that what you've experienced, Kent? <laughs> Katie? Oh, sure. You know, it's just, but but not in a bad way. Some people do it really annoyingly or or very unpleasantly but you don't you know well, you're you know, very I clear think, i think growing up with a dad who had that one persona in public and one in in private yeah i from a young child determined i am going to be who i am wherever i am and people are going to like it or lump it you know, yeah. I, I, I will never forget in middle school when we lived in that town, that small town, that the de a deacon family lived two doors down. And one day, my dad in the afternoon, it was a spring afternoon, all the windows in the back of the house were open. And my dad was angry about something. And he was on a tirade, you know, and he was slamming doors and slamming cupboards. And, and, and we kids were just sitting there waiting for it, you know, to see what he when he was done, because he was mad about something. And there came a knock at the back door, the back door where the windows are all open. And yeah. we're all like, Oh my goodness. And we look out and it's the deacon's wife from two doors down. And we're all trying to quietly get our dad's attention, right? So he'll quiet down because we know he doesn't want her to hear this. <laughs> <laughs> and we weren't very successful. Finally, we did, you know. And then he went to the back door and opened the door and he was so sweet, like nothing had been going oh, on. At that moment, <laughs> yeah. I said, that will never be me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Now, your mother was a source of encouragement to you, I think, um, during this time. Uh, and did it put a lot of stress on the family? When, what, did what put a lot of stress on the family? Well, yeah, yeah, right. when, with like, like this event, did that impact the family very oh, yeah. much? Did, no, we were that was we were used to that. We were used to that okay. in, in our family, you know. And and that that deacon's wife had the grace to never say anything to anybody and roll with it because I'm sure she she understood. Yeah. yeah. People have bad days. Things yeah. happen. Yeah. Right. Uh, how about uh, are your parents living? My my mother passed away this summer, and my father's oh. in his 80s, and he's still alive. Sorry how old is mom. he? Uh, he's 83. Okay. All right. So um, did, he, did he remain in the ministry? Um, when I graduated, about the time I graduated from high school, he started his own uh, ministry that was an evangelical ministry where he really went around to churches in the United States and really around the world and kind of held evangelical kind of meetings, kind of for revival, to teach people different things, that sort of thing. Okay. So he, despite... 
all the things he went through and suffered through, he still continued doing the work of, uh, of a Christian minister. That's correct. So yeah. I would say, you know, knowing about this a little bit, I'd say, good for him. He, right. did, not, he did not give up. He yeah, didn't. he didn't retire till he was 80. Yeah. Oh, good. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah he, he continued doing his ministry until he was 80. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're certainly hoping for at least that here. <laughs> <laughs> One of the things that you said that I didn't quite understand says, like once I said, I will never live in Alaska. Oh, my mom, my mother, every time I said I didn't like something, she, my mother had a very, very deep faith. Um, but she was kind of a fatalistic kind of person. And every time I said I didn't like something, she would say, well, that's what God is going to have you do. So I would, <laughs> one time I said, I would never want to move to Alaska. And my mom would say, well, that's just what God is going to have you do, which sort of left me with this feeling growing up that um, anything I didn't want to do, God was going to make me do. <laughs> and it, it took me a while in my 20s to realize God is not like that, that if he calls me to do something, he's going to change my heart first. And by the time I do it, I'm going to want to You're do gonna it. You're going to want to do it, right. I'm yeah. not going to go kicking and screaming, but my mom had yeah. left me with the impression that it was always going to be kicking and screaming. Yeah, that sounds a little formulaic, the, her response there. I, I yeah. wonder if there was a kind of a motherly thing that she was doing of... Um, something there i can't i can't quite put my finger on it preparing me for hard stuff <laughs> yeah maybe <laughs> now another little thing that's kind of going to move us to the next program uh is that when you were in college you had a friend who was majoring in marketing right marketing so actually in, in and you college, say i could not understand why anyone would want to learn about marketing <laughs> Right. So actually in college, I did a double degree. I did a degree in social work and a degree in business administration. So oh, I had a lot of friends, a lot of friends in the in the business, in the business school. But I had a really good friend who was in marketing and I marketing sales. Oh, who would icky. want to do that? You know, the we image still that say icky. Easy used car salesman came to right. mind. And I was like, why would you want to do marketing? Yeah, right. I, wanted nothing to do with marketing but here go this goes back to well god will make you do that god didn't make me but he does have a sense of humor because here i am having written a marketing book immersed in marketing and enjoying marketing yeah so. right and wondering why other people don't so you had so you had <laughs> no, kind I of a know why other people don't <laughs> yeah so you were kind of getting prepared for the things that you were going to be doing something that uh, impacts Katie and I, and we're going to focus on that here uh, in the next program. We're just winding this one down, but um, uh, so we're going to get into the Christian Indie Publishing Association. Sir, thank you for the time. Don't go anyplace. Stay there. We're going to have a little pause, and we're going to come back, and we're going to do program number two. So be looking for more of Sarah Bomey on why we are Christians. So long.